There are some monotype hardcore nuzlocks that have not been done on YouTube before, so I'm going to be filling the market by playing Pokemon Red, nuzlocking with only fighting types. This challenge only gives us four available Pokemon to use with the Mankey line, the Machop line, Poliwrath, and either Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. And with Psychic types being the powerhouses they are in Gen 1, I don't think a team of four is going to be particularly good for this challenge. The rules are on screen and also in the description, and while you're there, please like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah. Oh boy, you're gonna see how tough this challenge really is. Let's jump into the video. I changed my starter to be Mankey, naming it Coffee because I went for a drinks theme for some reason. And if anything is on a caffeine high, it is definitely this crazy jelly donut loving chimp. These donuts are great! Yes, yeah, they're my favorite! Our rival has Charmander, which evolves into a part flying type. In hindsight, a more defensive Pokemon like Blastoise or Venusaur would have been tougher to face later down the line, but honestly, let's just see if we get there first. So we start with only normal type moves to face the first gym with, training on Route 2 to gain stat EXP, which is the Gen 1 equivalent to EVs. Mankey also gets Karate Chop at level 15, which normally would be great, but in Gen 1 it is a normal type move, and just out of range of our level cap, meaning we have to edge our XP so that we level up during the gym battle. Oh, and speaking of the gym battle, the Brock battle is a slog to say the least. I lost to this gym probably about 50, 100, 50, 100 times. It's near impossible, but not fully impossible. Basically, I have to brute force through the Geodude using Leer as many times as I can before it builds back its defense with Defense Curl, and hoping it misses a few tackles. After it's built its defense up, we have a good amount of leeway that we've managed to actually get some good damage in. Geodude missing tackles is pivotal since it does about 7 damage at a time. We could have probably given ourselves perfect EVs or IVs or whatever, but that is just not in the spirit of the challenge, this was just a random manky I picked up. Eventually, we can take out the Geodude with incredibly low HP, getting to level 15 and learning Karate Chop. And even when I can get to Onyx, my HP is incredibly low and one tackle will just take us out and I have to do this whole thing again. Karate Chop has a very high critical hit ratio, but sometimes this doesn't help as I spam Leer when Onyx uses Bide, and critical hits bypass stat alterations of all kinds in Gen 1, so our critical hits were doing nothing. And on the one occasion that I actually won, all Onyx wanted to use was Screech and Bide and didn't attack us once. And that means we could eventually whittle it down enough to finally win the badge. This took me hours, literal hours. And I am begging, please let this challenge be just one run and then I'm done, because I cannot be doing that again. My mental health will not allow me. My goal here is to keep my level down so that I do not surpass the level cap too early, only battling the mandatory trainers on my way to Cerulean, but this means I won't be immediately ready to fight Misty when I get there, so I'll have to go and fight the rival first. Also getting the Mega Punch TM on the way, which is a very strong move, but not very accurate, could be helpful. I managed to beat the rival, but my word, we cut it close. Ending the battle on only 4 HP, now I'm going to be transparent here, I did save after Brock, so that if I lose, I won't have to restart the entire game, rather only starting from the end of that crazy battle, which only took a few years off my life. There is only one mandatory trainer in Misty's gym, the Goldeen with Peck, and obviously it's a beak and not a horn. And after that battle, I battled the mandatory trainers on Nugget Bridge until I hit the level cap. And this battle was brought to you by the power of critical hits, as without them, the X defend that Misty used on her Starmie would have been too much for our little chimp to handle. Which is strange because in the first gym, I didn't really want any critical hits at all because they would bypass the opponent's stat changes, but this time it's completely different, I don't understand, maybe it's the not very effective nature of the moves. But in the end, we leave Misty in tears, just like her banned Pokemon card, and get the badge. Seriously, what level of Kuma do you have to be to produce this artwork? Now there is one way I'm going to stay under the level cap for this next gym, and it involves switch training. So I catch a Spearow that will be used for a trade later on, and thanks to this method, I will retain under the level cap for the next gym. Put a stop off with a rival battle and somehow winning when he has a Kadabra? I'm not quite sure how we beat him then. How I stayed under the level cap is a mystery, because before the gym we have 33 EXP remaining, so basically one Pokemon knocked out and we are beating this level cap and I have to restart. 
After I traded away the Spearow for Farfetch'd, thank you for your service, my feathered friend. Also teaching Mankey the TM for Dig, and solid sneaking my way through the trash puzzle to face Lieutenant Surge. Dig and a high attack stat demolished Voltorb and Pikachu, but Raichu is a bit stronger, but we managed to survive, cutting it close yet again with 7 HP to take it out. Hopefully things will get a bit easier from now on, and I think they will. Let's find out why. A new level cap, and finally, a new team member, going into the rock tunnel and catching Machop, calling it Shake, like the protein kind. I taught Machop the TM for Body Slam and switch trained it through Rock Tunnel, leading to Celadon City, making sure to keep Mankey under the level cap yet again. Or should I say Primeape, since it's evolved during this process. And also, Primeape's back sprite really looks like a Mareep, and you can't unsee it now. Machop learns Low Kick at level 20, meaning that almost 4 badges deep into our run, our fighting types have their first fighting type move. Soon evolving Machop into Machoke at level 28, and despite Machoke having a badass mullet, I evolve it right away into Machamp because I have honestly suffered enough. I also got a Water Stone for later on, and the TMs for Rock Slide and Ice Beam which will also be helpful later. So let's battle Erika and our team is pretty tough even with our fully evolved team, but the likes of Body Slam and Mega Punch do help us out. With a bit of digging also, I think. I don't have the footage in front of me while narrating, but all I know is that I won the badge. So let's quick fire this sequence to get something very interesting for our team. Beating the Rocket Hideout, the Lavender Town Rival Battle, clearing out Team Rocket from Pokemon Tower, getting the Poker Flute, going to battle your mother, going to Fuchsia City to get the Good Rod, catch a Poliwag, and evolve it into Poliwhirl. And there we go, a new team member. Well, not exactly, because it's not a fighting type yet, but I'm still going to use it in random trainer battles just to level it up a bit. I can also take down the Fighting Dojo to get one of either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan, and I picked Hitmonlee. Chan does sound more tempting on paper with the elemental punches, but because they are all based on the special stat, they would be awful as Hitmonchan has pretty much negative special. I went through every floor of Sylphco clearing out the trainers and grinding up my team, with Poliwhirl hitting level 41 where it learned Amnesia, and I evolved it into Poliwrath with the Waterstone. Poliwrath is essentially Poliwhirl, but bigger and angrier. My plan was to get close to the level cap, battle Koga, and then edge up for the Sabrina battle, which is terrifying. But first of all, I decided to battle the rival, which went a lot better than I expected, especially since he has an Alakazam, which I felt I said something similar when he got a Kadabra, but Alakazam is the worst Pokemon in this challenge by a mile. Then we can just sweep past Giovanni, and I used Dig numerous times while battling Koga, even avoiding the self-destruct from his ace wheezing while underground because Koga is a lovely man who just wants to see me succeed. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the part where I either fail the run and cry myself to sleep, or beat Sabrina and get too cocky for my own good and eventually fail in the Elite Four. Well luckily for my mental health, we actually won this battle. I know, I was extremely shocked as well, but it was mainly due to Alakazam missing with Psybeam. If it landed that attack, then I'm sure I would have had to make a call to my therapist, or found a really really tall building or a bridge to jump off of. I still can't believe I've never used a Poliwrath before, and this section shows me why I should reconsider my options at some point, as we sweep through Blaine with ease. How's all this water treating your burns? No burn heal necessary. I also swept through the final gym with Giovanni's ground types with the Wrath of Poly. All the badges have been obtained, and now we have 5 battles to go. The rival battle, the Elite Four, and then the champion who we don't know the identity of. Please don't spoil it for those who don't know the champion of this 30 year old game. I got the team to level 60, which is just below the level cap of Lance's Dragonite, but I do need to get through the rival battle unscathed as possible. After teaching Polyroth Blizzard, more importantly Gen 1 Blizzard with 90% accuracy, I can beat the rival with some epic amnesia badge boost shenanigans. Now at level 62 for the Elite Four, the team is looking as good as it can do with Poliwrath for special attacking and all the others for physical, and our move pools are also a lot more varied than I thought they would be. Can we beat this challenge? Can we do it deathless? Let's find out. Against the first battle with Lorelei, I lead with Machamp against her Dugong and just start blasting with Low Kick. It tries to use Rest since it's a psychic move, and obviously it's super effective, but we take it out in its sleep, which is Kind of dark. Ooh, that's... 
Cloyster does little to nothing to us as two low kicks take it out, leading to the strong foe in Slowbro. It has really good defense, so we switch into Earthquake, but it just uses the super effective Amnesia. After taking it out, Jinx was also a one shot with Rock Slide after some weak slaps, and finally her Lapras, which is low kick twice, as Blizzard only takes us down to half. Pretty good start. Now for Bruno, I'm starting with Polyrath as he leads with Onyx, and we set up three Amnesias, and then just press Surf and knock everything out in a single wave. We truly are the true fighting type master around these parts, and Bruno, and Bruno is still as easy as ever. Time for the Agatha battle, and this has the potential to be a tough battle, as her Gengars do have some really strong moves and resist fighting type moves. But Machamp battles through the confusion to one shot with an Earthquake, because Gengar doesn't have Levitate in Gen 1, and then go back with Rock Slide. Then I just click Earthquake and win, and that takes out the rest of her team. Gengar tries to tox it, but even that gets a Gen 1 miss, and we get to Lance on the first try. Then again, it would have to be the first try. It couldn't be the second try, because then I'd have to restart the whole game. Finally, we have Lance, and he leads with Gyarados, so I start with Rock Slide, as he uses his turn up with a reactionary Hyper Potion. We use Rock Slide again after being hit with a Hydro Pump, and then take it out, leading to Dragonair number one, as it spams the super effective Agility while being body slammed. Same with Dragonair number two, as I switch into Polyrath before the fearsome Aerodactyl comes in. It does about a third to us with Hyper Meme, and we take it out with Surf, leaving just Dragonite in our way. But we miss a Blizzard and get hit by the super effective Agility. How will we survive this? By using Blizzard again, of course. Now we can fight the champion and let's see if we can beat this challenge. We have done it with all our teams still here, and can we do this deathless, or will I fail at the final hurdle? He leads with Pidgeot as we lead Machamp, hitting a Rock Slide as it charges a powerful Sky Attack. We just miss the one shot as it almost takes us out landing the Sky Attack, but we can survive and land a Rock Slide. Not as good a start as Alakazam comes in next, so I swap into Polyrough since it has the best special stat. Alakazam uses Reflect and it hits a Psybeam, taking Polyrough to 90 HP as we use Amnesia to boost our stats. But what happens next? could settle our fate. Body Slam Paralysis lands on the Spoon Man who uses Reflect again? Okay, I'll use Body Slam again and it uses Reflect a third time? Bro just threw the battle. This could have taken up my whole team, but no, he just decided to let me win. Rhydon is one shot with Surf, and Executor is hit with a critical blizzard, but survives and use Hypnosis. Again, a very super effective move. I bring in Primate to get some screen time in the final battles, and the champion sends in Gyarados. Gyarados uses Leer either side of her strength and seismic toss, and then hits a hyper beam leaving Primeape on mere pixels of health. It has a recharge turn so I swap into Machoke to use a rock slide, but with only 45 HP any attack will knock us out. Any attack except Dragon Rage which always does 40 HP. God this champion sucks. Charizard is his final Pokemon, and for some scream time, I use Hitmonlee, who lands a few swifts as Charizard spams Rage, which is pointless, as we win the battle, officially beating Pokemon Red with only fighting types in a hardcore Nuzlocke setting, and doing it deathless, if you ignore the million and one times I lost to Brock. So I am officially a professional Nuzlocke, and become the first person on YouTube to complete this challenge. We make history on the Super E123 channel and not just the record of the longest time between uploads. The first part of the challenge absolutely sucked. I spent literal hours on the first battle with Brock, and even on my first attempt at this challenge, I went over the level cap for Lieutenant Surge so I had to restart the game again. So basically, this was my third run of the game. Again, if you ignore all the Brock battles. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I know, I actually uploaded. And my next video is going to be a brilliant one. It is a Professor Oaks challenge, but not as you know it. Hit like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when that comes out. Anyway, my name is Super E123, and I will see you all next time.